I wanted to talk about QAnon's reaction to the Trump assassination attempt. It is entertaining as hell to see the fascinating conspiracy theories they weave. And not only that, the conspiracy theories that they reject. They heard conspiracy theories that are legitimately false, like Trump staged the attempt. And they come up with logical, well-thought-out explanations for why it couldn't be the case. It's like, why don't they apply that logic in any other area of life? Anyway, I want to give it a watch. have my uh, green screen up today, so I uh, hope, hope you guys don't mind that. I don't know if you guys can see the advertisement along the bottom. My pillow. My pillow's advertising. These two are QAnoners to the core. On the left is a woman named Mary Grace, and on the right is the Praying Medic, a.k.a. Dave Hayes. That's his, his actual name, Dave Hayes. That's what he goes by, Dave Hayes. Anyway, he's, he writes, like, a book per month, basically. He writes so much, it's ridiculous. And he's one of the most famous QAnon interpreters out there. Just a, kind of a, a quick rundown of what QAnon is, 30-second breakdown if people are unfamiliar. QAnon was created on 4chan, which is like Reddit, kind of, except it's more anonymous and it's full of scumbags. Um, it works just like Reddit, basically, though. So there was a guy on there. They call each other Anons because they're anonymous. Everybody on 4chan is anonymous. Um, so there's an Anon on there who went by Q Clearance Patriot, and he made this big long post on like the main thing that claimed that he had Q clearance, security clearance, which is the highest security clearance you can get. And it's only found in like the Department of Energy or something like that. And uh, dude claimed that Hillary Clinton was about to be arrested and all kinds of other crazy things. None of it ever came true, of course, but it, it's all like really cryptic nonsense. Hang on, let me just... Let me, make, let me make myself blue. I think I like blue better. Anyway, um, that's QAnon. It, it's a belief system that formed around this Q clearance patriot fellow. And he made all kinds of weird, sprawling, confusing claims uh, that don't make any sense at all. And you had to have interpreters come in to kind of try to piece something out of it. And that's where Dave Hayes comes in. Cassidy Hutchinson, like forever ago during like the, uh, what do you call it? the January 6th hearings, Cassidy Hutchinson was like a, an aide to Mark Meadows, which is Trump's chief of staff. And she testified to the January 6th committee that Donald Trump was trying to go to the Capitol on January 6th and Secret Service said, no, we're not doing that. It's not safe. And Q and all of his little QAnon followers went absolutely nuts over it, turned rabid. And uh, just, you know, this should give you an idea of like what a, a Q post looks like. By the way, we are very confident that Q is um, Ron Watkins and his dad, Jim Watkins. We'll get to them in a minute, but just listen to this analysis by the praying medic of a Q post. Who was posting in the middle of the night? Uh, early this morning, we got a message on the board from Q. A little bit after midnight, Pacific time zone, Q posted this. What is at stake? Who has control? Surprise witness. Who was surprised? Who will be surprised? Use your logic. Can emotions be used to influence decisions? How do you control emotion? Define plant. How do you I mean, this is all obviously complete nonsense, right? Is it just me? It, it's very clearly some guy just trying to sound cryptic and succeeding at sounding cryptic and getting a whole bunch of poor fools to follow him and try to make sense out of it. Like Jordan Peterson does, you know, uses big words and then people like dissect it and think they feel special or whatever for it. You insert a plant. Can emotions be used to insert a plant? Who is... No, a plant is green and it has leaves, okay? Emotions can't be inserted into that. Used to insert a plant. Who is Cassidy Hutchinson? Trust a plan. Q. 
So uh, yeah, that's a general Q post if you've never seen one before. Um, and this is Q right here. This is the guy that does the posts. It started out as another guy named Paul Ferber on 4chan, but Paul Ferber was convinced to move the QAnon account over to 8chan, which is just like 4chan, except it has child material on it, too. Servers hosted in the Philippines by this fine-looking gentleman right here. And when they did move to 8chan, he took over. Writing style analysis, a whole bunch of other things. Uh, the guy basically admitted it, practically admitted that he's Q. He is Q. He administrates the servers that Q operates from. Anyway, it just, he ran for office in Arizona back in 2022. Yeah. My name is Ron Watkins and I am not a politician. I am an entrepreneur and I'm a computer scientist. We have to send a fighter and I am your fighter. I am fighting for you. If you send me to DC, you will know that I will be fighting against this evil and I will make sure that we drive them back and I will make sure that your rights are, are kept. Kept is an option, I suppose. I would have gone with protected, defended, whatever. To each their own, I suppose. Anyway, he's obviously trying to pretend to be a politician and failing miserably. Who would want to pre pretend to be a politician anyway? That is such a plastic, fake, terrible personality that you have to put on or persona or whatever. He's just awful. Anyway, yeah, I, I have a whole thing about that. That's not what we're here to talk about. Dave Hayes. The guy who is doing the original Q analysis is here to tell us what he thinks about Donald Trump's, uh, you know, whole thing. So let's listen to what he says here. Jump past the ads. Yeah. Like in the 70s and raining, it's perfect. It's like it's me. Ugh, God, they're talking about weather. Like, who cares? They're either like, I want to I want to hear about their opinion on Trump being shot. Things up. They're using really what's going on. Oh, boy. Here we go. All of the, the clickbait and the panic having to do with different theories coming out around theories on this uh this situation do you want to add anything to that dave oh boy here we go okay while we listen to this we're going to play a game it's basically pokemon fire red except it's a version where i can catch every pokemon like mew and all of them um it's a rom hat called ultraviolet so yeah that should just be in the background won't bother you too much you never played before but uh, let's listen. Theories or Q-tips? Yeah. Um, when you asked me to go, if I wanted to go on a <laughs> live stream with you, I don't know when that was. It seemed like a year ago. <laughs> a week ago. <laughs> I'm sure it was about a week. <laughs> you were asking about, uh, I think you are asking about one of the Supreme Court decisions. I was like, I just didn't feel like it was a good time to go live on that issue because it seemed like. The oh, my God. Who cares? I uh, and this uh, well, Secret Service in particular was not forthcoming with information. There was uh, a press conference, I think, within 24 hours. Secret Service wasn't even there. It's all local cops. So, wait, Secret Service wasn't where they were definitely where Trump was hit. Does he mean they, that Secret Service wasn't at a press conference? Okay, to go on and do a live stream, do a broadcast. Um, and weigh in on these issues when I don't know really what's going on. Is he saying he doesn't like to talk about subjects unless he knows enough about them? Are you serious right now? Um, there's been a lot of, you know, live streams on Twitter, the spaces, and people are asking me, hey, come on, we're going to talk about this and talk about that. And I'm like, I know, I'm, I'm doing research. I have to figure out what's going on. Bro, are you real? Is this real right now? So I've just been researching and researching and digging and digging and looking at what's what information is available, what information is coming up. Every time there's a news cycle like this, regardless of what the issue is, whether it's COVID or some other issue, it takes a while to figure out who the reliable sources of information are. Okay, interesting. Uh, well, when things like this happen, you know, um, when somebody is attacked or hell. COVID's another good example. We didn't know what was going on with COVID. We didn't know how to deal with it. We had no idea what it was or where it came from or what the side effects were or, the, or whatever at the time. And we were just feeling our way in the dark. Everybody together, we were all trying to figure it out. And there were no reliable sources, really, at first on anything. 
everybody was guessing. And then peer review articles started coming out. Uh, we were still looking at like pre-print papers though, like scientific papers that were done but not peer reviewed yet, you know? We're just feeling our way through. There's nothing wrong with using the information we have tentatively until we have better information as long as we make it clear that we are not 100% sure on whatever, you know, thing we're claiming here. Regardless of what the issue is, whether it's COVID or some other issue, it takes a while to figure out who the reliable sources of information are. Because in every uh, crisis, in every uh, big news story, you're going to find a lot of people online commenting on the issue. Probably 80% of those people should be ignored because they don't know what they're talking about. They're either making things up, they're using poor sources, they're, um, they're, they're Listen to QAnon member Dave Hayes over here. Yes. Good job, bud. Uh, this is actually really interesting, though, because you guys remember when Henry Kissinger died? Maybe not, because it wasn't publicized like at all. You know, it came out like, oh, my God, this guy died. He was like the architect of the Vietnam War. Complete monster. Genocidal maniac. Awful in every way that guy was. Bastion of the right wing. He was the, what was he? he was he the Secretary of Defense or Attorney General or something? Secretary of State, maybe? Under Richard Nixon, I think. I could be wrong on that. But he was really high up, basically, in, the, in like, the military chain of command for making decisions. Anyway, uh, he died. And there was complete and total dead silence. There was just a lull where nobody said jack shit until... They were told what to think. They were waiting for Donald Trump to speak on his, like, reputation or whatever. Was he a good guy or was he a bad guy? Should I hate him or should I love him? Just waiting. And Trump never said anything. He didn't say he was good or bad. So he died in obscurity with no culture war BS to protect his reputation or destroy it. Fascinatingly. And that's why we don't remember when Henry Kissinger died exactly. But we do remember when, for example, Trayvon Martin died or George Floyd died or whatever, because people were upset over that and the right turned it into a culture war issue. The right started claiming that George Floyd deserved it and shit. You remember? So what he's describing is a phenomenon that honestly I I've noticed and I should name this phenomenon. I don't know what I'd name it, like waiting in the wings, maybe, or something, where these people just sit here and wait for the Republican Party, the leadership, to tell them what to think. And there's just dead silence until they do. Anyway, it's the same with like January 6th, too. No one said a word about January 6th, good or bad, uh, on the right for like months. And then they started chipping away at the, you know, um, at the truth of the matter started trying to rehabilitate the January 6 people's reputations and everything fascinating their their sources don't exist or their or their or their sources that exist don't have good information there was a lot of that early on with the covid thing and then we started to get doctors <clears throat> coming out who were actually actually experts on uh, uh, subject matter experts who were then teaching people and and uh, illustrating the finer points of virology and, and vaccines and, and all. I assume he's talking about COVID now? A lot of stuff. There's a lot of bad information early on in COVID. There's a lot Oh, absolutely there was, but I bet we totally disagree on which information was bad. A lot of bad information with this uh, shooting yeah. against President Trump. There's all kinds of people, like you said, trying to get clicks, trying to get engagement because the more clicks, the more engagement you get. If you have a paid account on, on Twitter, you can make money off of it. And on... Um, Rumble and other things, too. And well, engagement and attention means money in a lot of ways. Like if you're an author, you know, more attention means more book sales. Um, my deal is I, I don't care about making money off of this stuff. Mm, sure, I bet. I'm uh, I have been 24 seven from the time I wake up in the morning till the time I go to bed at night, digging, researching, trying to figure out researching what happened, what did not happen, trying to debunk some of the 
some of the claims. But one of the things that, that I would um, suggest um, when it comes to things like this is when you see someone making a fantastic uh, a, a claim about something that they believe happened, go through a little bit of analysis and try to see if you can debunk what they're saying. Dude, I love that this guy is a QAnoner. He is absolutely 100% correct so far. How the hell did he arrive at the QAnon position? I'm just like so baffled by this. If you can shoot holes, pardon the pun, not intended. I will not pardon that pun. If you can shoot holes, if you can punch holes in their theory, in their assertions, if they say this happened and this is the person who did it and here's why and here's the picture, here's the video. Okay. See if you can uh, poke holes in that in that uh, explanation. If you can't, if you cannot debunk it, then put that in the category of okay, maybe this is what happened. But if you you I okay, I don't know what he's getting at here, but you should not assume it's true if you can't debunk it. You can very easily, very quickly debunk something. Um, you should you should just hang on to that. Now, here's an example. I'm so, like, what the hell is he going on about? And what is that weird noise in the background? I saw a lot of people online posting pictures of a What is she do Is she typing right now? Water tower. And they're all insisting that this water tower has a black spot, some kind of a black object. Like half. She's typing. She's typing right now. That is what she is doing. How rude is that? Between the so, like right into the microphone. I can't hear myself think. Top and the bottom of the, of the main part of the water tower. There's this black thing. And people are saying that thing was moving when they heard the gunfire on the video. And they're saying that was a, that's a shooter on the water tower. I'm like really between like the, the top and the bottom of the round part of the water tower, there's this black thing that's moving. Okay. Um, when crazy events like this happen, you can assume that the things that like the crowd says are, are going to be inaccurate in the moment. Crowds don't really know what's happening. They don't have a 30,000 foot view or whatever. And things are like happening really, really fast. You just have to like wait and see to get accurate information. So yeah, of course there were a billion people saying a billion crazy things at the time. Sorry. I gotta, I gotta adjust the, okay. Yep, we're going to zoom this out and we're going to fix it. Well, I keep I kept hearing people say that that was a shooter because it was moving during the gun firing. And I'm like, OK, right. So, number one, what you're suggesting is there is a person who's either repelling halfway down the top of the water tower and then they stop and lock off uh, their rope on, on a figure eight and they start firing while they're in mid repel or they're dude where the hell is this skepticism for QAnon? or they're levitating or floating somehow 120 feet off the ground like that doesn't make any sense dude i love that he has this skepticism because he believes equally as insane stuff if not even more insane when it comes to QAnon and, and what QAnon has to say this is fantastic right right and then and yeah. then, oh, I guess she's done typing. Thank you. People started coming up with better pictures of the water tower, and it's very clear there was a dark blue or black star on the water tower, and that's what people were seeing. Uh, yeah, I don't even know what he's talking about right now. So uh, now, with respect to the water tower shooter, because there's a lot of people that are saying that there's there was a shooter on the water. Oh, yeah, I remember there's a conspiracy that there were two shooters. I don't even know. I, I, I'm skeptical. That doesn't sound right. I'm going to have to go down this rabbit trail because. Oh, please go down the rabbit trail. Um, okay. uh, she says that's OK. <laughs> there 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 are some things that people are saying in witness accounts that are worth considering. But uh, you have to consider them, I think, in the right mm -hmm. light. So, and I got into a long discussion two days ago on this subject on, on X on Twitter, um, because people- She's typing again. Are you kidding me with this? Kept on putting these videos and images in my mentions and in my news, in my feed. And I was like, okay, I have to, I have to deal with this. So what I saw early on was people posting videos 
of interviews that the news had done with witnesses who said something about the water tower. Okay. okay. Yeah, witnesses at these types of events are not trustworthy. You need to wait to get like footage and, and accurate information, which we did. But of course conspiracies are forming about this, that there are like two shooters and stuff. Seriously? So, um, and, and I'm, I'm just going to jump right in and start to give you some uh, methods that I use to arrive at the truth or the falsity of these various accounts. Good. So there's people posting these videos and they're saying, this person said there was a shooter on the water tower. Watch this video. This proves that there was a shooter on the water tower. I'm like, okay. I'll listen. Yeah, so he's finding a bunch of conspiracies. Great. Listen to the video. So I listened to it. And this one woman said, oh, yeah, well, uh, I saw somebody shooting toward the water tower. And I'm like, okay. So this woman's testimony was. Is that what he said? He was like, okay. Okay. She saw somebody shooting. She's typing again. Toward the water tower. And, and a lot of people online have said that is proof. That's an indicator that there was a shooter on the water tower because of this person's testimony. Yes, we get it. People's testimony is not trustworthy. Good job. <laughs> Look, you just listen to what she says. She's saying she saw someone shooting at the water tower. Okay, where was the shooter? Where was she? Dude is dissecting, like, a whole situation when it's completely unnecessary. Like, who gives a shit? What is he even going on about right now? What's Was the person shooting at the water tower? Why would they shoot at the water tower? None, this, none of this makes any sense. Yeah, I love it. Okay. So that is one testimony that I've seen re reported repeatedly saying that that's evidence that there was a water tower shooter. Now... There's another testimony out there from a woman who, who says she saw somebody, she saw or she said a sniper killed the uh, shooter in the water tower. Interesting. Something, something yeah. like is she, is she I'm sorry, is she even listening to what he's saying? Like she's just she's typing and, and just periodically saying, hmm. Interesting. I don't think she's even listening right now. That's funny. You know, I guess his audience or her audience is interested in all this, if nothing else. To the effect of, I saw them sh kill the shooter or the sniper in the water tower. This woman thinks that she saw a shooter. She said in the water tower, maybe she meant on the water tower. And she believes that she saw the sniper in or on the water tower being shot by someone else. And so she doesn't describe where the, where the shooter was, where either of the shooters were exactly, because she says in the water tower. And then we don't know who she's referring to as the one who killed the person in the water tower. Dude, these people care so much about not trusting official sources, it's embarrassing. I'll tell you what I know about the situation, about the assassination attempt. Dude was sitting on a sloped roof with an AR-15, aimed it at Trump, and pulled the trigger. That's all. Like, th there's no more to this that I really need to know. It doesn't, it's not important in any way, shape, or form. Like, why is he obsessing over this to the point where he's, like, quote-unquote, researching it for literal hours at a time? Like, this is crazy, bro get a life outside of conspiracy land like go outside to the park maybe walk along like the river and just check things out you know enjoy the breeze on your face maybe i think that go a long way toward helping you she's definitely not listening yeah i know right like uh it's kind of embarrassing like it it pisses me off more than anything maybe when I'm trying to communicate with somebody, clearly not listening, not even like not looking, they're doing something totally different. And then there's a big long pause and they realize there's a big long pause. And so they insert into that pause. Interesting. Or really, you know, I realize then that you just did not give a shit about literally anything that I just said. 
again, I, I suppose this is different because they're on like a, a, pub, a public facing platform. I mean, how many views does this video have? Allegedly 20,000 views. I don't fully trust Rumble's view count, but so I, I suppose there's a twist to her not paying any attention to what her guest is saying, but whatever. She doesn't really elaborate on any of that. And so this is another one of those testimonies where I'm like, okay, what are you even saying? What are you claiming? Are you claiming that you saw the, sh the sniper in the water tower die? How did you see them die if that freaking water tower is like a quarter of a mile away? I mean, even on high res zoomed in videos, you can barely see any details on that water tower. Seriously, the conspiracy theories this guy buys into are way less believable or credible. He's a QAnoner, so he thinks that there's like this sprawling conspiracy of elites that are drinking the blood of children to get a high off of it, like it's like uh, cocaine or something like that. And they're what, like sticking straws into them like they're a Capri Sun or something. I mean, he gets real detailed with some of his crazy stuff. And he's like dissecting this thing about a woman believing there's a second shooter. Like, bro, dismiss it and move on with your life. Claims require evidence. If they don't have evidence, then dismiss it and move on. I get, you know why he's so focused on this, I bet? It's probably because his community, the QAnon community, or even the far right community, not even QAnon, is. Like, they can't accept it. They, they cannot let this go. They are laser focused on what's happening with this and believe that, like, what, the deep state is coming for Trump and they, whoever they happens to be, set this whole thing up to hurt Trump or some other nonsense. As if they were powerful enough to do that. And if they were powerful enough to you know, set up a sniper to take out Trump, then I'm sure they would be powerful enough to make sure the dude didn't miss. Or maybe that there would be multiple people that didn't miss. It's such a joke, dude. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I'm just now realizing that this, this screen is not exactly right still. I got to fix this. Sorry. We'll, we'll keep listening. How was she with unaided vision? She obviously didn't have binoculars. How would she be able to see someone on top of... Wait, how do you know she didn't have binoculars? to play devil's advocate the water tower be shot and fall because because a lot of those a lot of the view to that water tower was obstructed from people who were there at the uh, at the event so i'm going through all of these um claims by people and i'm trying to come kind of weed through what is testimony from a reliable witness and what is testimony from an unreliable witness and i was trying to help people understand this like just because you get a testimony from someone about what they believe they saw happen doesn't mean it's necessarily true. Let me give you an example. Please give me an example. Um, as a paramedic, my job is... Oh, yeah, he was a paramedic. If you don't know his story, he that's why he calls himself the praying medic. So he would... Um, he, ha he was a paramedic for like 20 years or something, to my knowledge, according to him. And he would pray over people, and those people would turn out okay. And he taught other people, quote-unquote, taught them. He wrote books about how to pray for food and have the food appear in front of you, basically. I, I, I'm not even joking or being hyperbolic. That's 100% real. Let me see if I can find one, um, like a clip from him about this. One second here. It was like there was a period of time where Q went away. It, like he just stopped posting, Q did. And the praying medic, Dave Hayes, got, like, progressively more and more pissed off that Q just stopped posting after Trump lost the 2020 election. And we get clips like this. No one is, has been more pissed off at Q than me. By the, this is 2022. It's uh, early February 2022. Obviously, the dude's back into QAnon now. I'm sure I don't even need to say that. But he gave up on QAnon for a while. Uh... For the you know three years we sat through of waiting for the arrests, thinking that the arrests were just around the corner, like it was just going to happen. And this this next week we're going to see people arrested, and and it never happened. Uh, so I have you know as much frustration as anyone does about 
how long we've been waiting for the arrest to happen. However, yeah. um, Q did warn us on the front end of the conversation that a lot of what he was going to put out was going to be disinformation. Oh, my God, dude. He cannot accept that he got sucked into a ridiculous conspiracy. And I don't mean got sucked in. I mean, he's a leader of the movement. I don't mean like he's on the fringes like, oh, this guy believes some weird stuff. OK, whatever. No, people follow him. OK, he has like tens, hundreds of thousands of followers, maybe lots. Here's what he decided to get into when Q disappeared for like a year. It was after 2020, after the election. So 2021, when Biden was inaugurated, Q, there was radio silence, nothing. And then Q started posting again. I heard rumors. I don't know if it's true. Probably not. But there were rumors that the QAnon account was for sale for a million dollars on, you know, some of, some of the like the underground um, areas that I kind of troll for information on what's happening on the right. Again, I don't know if that's true, but this happened um, six months or so after Q disappeared. So July 2021, I'd say. And after the dude, the praying medic started to finally accept that Q wasn't coming back and that everything that he said was nonsense. Then he started talking about this stuff right here. This one is from May 6, 2022. Right. So back in November, like I said, I switched uh, to teaching primarily about healing, food multiplication, deliverance, and a lot of... Switched away from QAnon. ...other related issues because uh, God was telling me, look, I need you to get on this. We need to get people trained and equipped so they can work miracles. Bro, God was not telling you jack shit, okay? Because I want to show, I want to respond to this crisis in a specific way. And people need to learn how to do this. So, uh, yeah, um, I, I do believe we're going to see food shortages worsen. I think we're going to see higher gas prices. Um, it wouldn't surprise me at all if we see $10 uh, a gallon gas. But, wow. Wow. But, wow. Uh, if suddenly gas is $11, 12 $13 a gallon, you can pray over your gas tank and God will make that gas uh, oh, last so for two good. weeks. <laughs> he is 100% for real with this, okay? Absolutely 100% serious. Yeah. <laughs> right, you, so back in... You can pray over your gas tank and not have to fill it up for a whole week. I mean, you have to fill it up first and you have to only drive, you know, enough that it would only use like 10 gallons, but you can drive for a week on that gas tank. Uh, let's see. Here's another one. And the car would start to sputter, and he'd look back to the scene. Hey, who's not praying in tongues back there? And so they kick it back in, and the car would keep going. And I know he wasn't making this up. You know, he, yeah. there are people that he had a friend who was driving across the country, and the car would start sputtering because it was out of gas. And he'd get back there and pray in tongues, and what? Kick the car? Is that what he said? He'd kick the car and pray in tongues, and suddenly, just like that. There was gas in it again. What? I live the, and you know, you go, how did that, when you, and we've discovered when you pay out your tithe and your generous and tithing and offerings, it's amazing how far the money goes. Oh, please. You know. Yeah. No, it is. And, and I have a lot of friends who have seen uh, miraculous uh, multiplication of gas, I would call it. You know, they, yeah. they've driven across the country on an empty wow. tank of gas. Wow. <laughs> this is real. Literally, like, all the way across the country and never filled up their car. These people are 100% serious with this nonsense. This is straight up embarrassing. These people are embarrassing. Yashi Stampedes, he should lose his medical license for pushing misinformation and pushing faith over medical attention that's needed by someone seeking medical medical health well to my knowledge he doesn't um do that anymore like he's not a, an emt anymore he switched to writing and he's written like a book per month for like 5 10 15 years like forever he's you know his books aren't like particularly good and they don't sell particularly well well, you know, if you up or if you upload to Amazon and you do it on Kindle and everything, your costs are really low. And if you do your own editing, everything else, your costs are nearly zero. 
so let's say he's making like five dollars per book so he sells like 200 copies of a book per month that's a thousand dollars a month say he has like 12 books that are selling 10 20 30 copies a month in addition to that it's a living um and and it can be a pretty good living if you do it right but that's where he started after leaving like the paramedic stuff that's what he started doing his wife does the same thing and the QAnon thing like made him kind of explode made his books blow because he was so like well known in the world in the QAnon world that is so anyway that's the praying medic and some of the more egregious ridiculous beliefs after leaving QAnon behind gets into you know you can multiply gasoline by praying in tongues in the back of your car after moving from QAnon, he went to that. And after leaving that, he went right back to QAnon like an addict to a drug. Just sad. Honestly sad. Anyway, I keep listening to him try to dissect all of the conspiracies around Trump's assassination attempt here. To interview witnesses to shootings, stabbings, motor vehicle accidents, plane crashes, bus crashes, all kinds of stuff. So he's talking about what happened when he was a paramedic, I think, right? I believe they saw it happen doesn't mean it's necessarily true. Let me give you an example. Um, as a paramedic, my job is to interview witnesses to shootings, stabbings, motor vehicle accidents, plane crashes, bus crashes, all kinds of stuff. We have to go, one of the things we have to do on scene is we have to interview the, the victims and occasionally the witnesses and find out what happened. You you were there. You were in the accident. You saw the accident. You were the driver. You were... Yeah, absolutely. And eyewitness testimony. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to turn that off. And eyewitness testimony is the least reliable form of evidence just about that you can get. It is so worthless. Eyewitness testimony is different. You have seven different witnesses. They tell you seven different stories. You can see a prime example of that from the gospel accounts in the Bible. Four different stories. F I'm sorry, four people, four different stories completely. Just throw stuff at the wall, see what sells a few copies. Yeah, yeah, that's what he does. Uh, really. I discovered when I was writing my book that it takes a really long time to write a book well. And to this day, I don't feel like I wrote my book particularly well, although I've been told by others that I did a really good job with it. I just like I feel like I, I was kind of sprawling and moved from subject to subject a little bit too quickly without context for why I was switching, you know, things like that. Uh, there were some grammatical errors and stuff that I tried to fix later. It's hard, really, really hard to write a book well. But if you just don't give a shit, like he doesn't seem to, you just like bust out a book per month and make money off of it. Like whatever, you know, it took me 10 days to write my book, 10 days. And then it took another three months to clean it up, to edit it, to erase parts that didn't belong and to rearrange places and, you know, plan printings and all, all of it. it took three months after the pa the words were on the page. That's not even the hard part, getting the words on the page. That's the easy part. So the fact that he busted out a book per month in the first place should tell you something about the quality of the book. Passenger, you know, a witness, what happened? So sometimes we'll have to interview more than one person. And if you work in law enforcement, this is your job. You get to interview witnesses and, and victims. And what you'll find out is that if you interview 10 people who were witnesses to the same event, you're going to get 10 different stories. About yep. What happened? Yeah. You're, you're going to. She is not listening this whole time. She, she hasn't said a word. I guess she learned to mute her mic when she types. So that's a plus. But she's periodically just saying, wow. Yeah. Mm hmm. Interesting. She is not paying a lick of attention, is she? Fine. 80 to 90% of the people who will agree on the basic facts of the event. And then you're going to find the 10 to 20% outliers 
who will disagree on the basic facts of the event and have a, a significantly different account of what happened. That makes sense, yeah. All right. So, oh, she decided to start paying attention again. Now she's going to interrupt. So, mm -hmm. and, and and here's and, and here's uh, I'm almost done. And here's what happens. Some people just process things differently, depending on your viewpoint, your vantage point, depending on your life experiences. Your mind can actually take that event and transpose upon that event false memories of things that didn't actually happen. Yeah. Um. My, I don't talk about this a whole lot, but my mom was a victim of false memories. I pinned a link to my book, by the way. In fact, you know what? I think I might have told this story in my book, come to think of it. But um, when I was six or something, my mom was having deep mental problems and she needed to see a therapist desperately. And Jehovah's Witnesses are opposed to therapy, or they were at the time, at least, very opposed to therapy. So she didn't go to a therapist she talked to another jehovah's witness named sandy and sandy basically pulled memories out of her head she said okay now close your eyes and we're going to try to remember some things and she said now what do you see and my mom would say i see a bird and she'd say now where is that bird it's in my parents yard and now what's inside at your parents house and you know she she did that she draw it out and she drew out from my mom memories of my grandfather doing horrific things like murdering people and sexually assaulting them and just really 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 bad stuff and it, it was so real that she got the police involved which is kind of a no-no with jehovah's witnesses at the time certainly and the police showed up with like scanning equipment because she was very specific and her claims about like, you know, he put them in barrels and he buried them in his yard and she knew exactly where they were and everything. They show up with scanning equipment and found nothing because false memories are as real as real memories. People don't they you know, it's you can't tell the difference. That's why you don't do that. You don't try to pull memories out of people like that. You can't tell if they're real or fake. My grandfather was completely innocent. He didn't do shit to anybody his whole life. And she just drug his reputation through the mud. It was really sad, but you know, he f he forgave my mom nearly instantly after going to like a college course on false memories and how they work and everything. Anyway, uh, from my understanding, memory is really shoddy because when you remember something, you're not remembering the event. To my knowledge, you're remembering the last time you thought about that event. So I go to like a barbecue and I get like a, a glass of punch or something and I see a friend over by the table. Well, two months later, I think about that. I forget that there was punch involved. And when that comes back up, I just I don't remember the punch because I'm remembering the previous time or the previous memory of it. Um, it's obviously much more complex than that. I'm simplifying it dramatically, but false memories are super easy to form and memories completely untrustworthy completely and i'm not going to go into the psychology of false memories as if he knows jack shit about it but there are some people who simply do not recall things accurately i have sat around with my brother and sisters and talked about events that happened at family reunions and things uh that have happened and i listened to their account and i think were you even there yeah it, like people will remember the exact opposite thing happening they will remember seeing you pick up a pair of keys and put them in your pocket when you absolutely did not. It's weird how memory works, seriously. Because it's definitely not what I saw happen. Yeah. That's not what I remember happening. They describe it completely differently. So my, I'm saying all of this to simply say this. Just because someone says they heard or saw something happen, it doesn't mean that they are a reliable witness. A lot of these people are unreliable witnesses. Like his entire worldview and the thing that got him famous was his trust of an anonymous Jagoff. So just some guy who claimed to have security clearance and very clearly switched at some point in time. Like the original Q poster, Paul Ferber, was reserved 
and more um, conservative in the way that he posted things, not politically conservative, but just like more careful about the things that he said. And when it switched over to 8chan, it became flamboyant and obnoxious and just like unhinged exclamation marks all over the place, you know, and like just putting exclamation, exclamation, one, one exclamation. It was crazy. It was very clearly a different person entirely. But this guy didn't seem to accept that. He's sitting here telling us about why he doesn't trust conspiracies about Donald Trump's assassination attempt, but completely forgetting that what he's saying invalidates his entire life. I love everything about it. You should make a collection of canned explanations for stuff that you explain over and over. Yeah, that would be useful, but it's like only 5% of the audience watches consistently. The average number of videos that people on my channel and pretty nearly every YouTube channel watch is two and a half. So I release, you could say three videos per week on this channel, including my live stream. I release four videos per week on my Fireside channel and five to seven on my Unfiltered channel. If I haven't explained it in the past seven days, statistically, the people listening haven't heard it. And if it's relevant to the conversation, I feel it's important to talk about it, you know, to bring it up. At least give like a basic uh, rundown. Anyway, I've been watching you since you had under 10 videos up. Really? Have you? Real Pumpkin J? That's crazy. Wow, dude. I wonder who like my longest watching viewer is. That might actually be it. That might take the cake. Anyway, let me know what you think about these people in the comments. I love how compartmentalized their thinking is. It is so entertaining.